The Signal Oil Program, The Whistler. That whistle is your signal for the Signal Oil Program, The Whistler. Whistler, and I know many things, for I walk by night. I know many strange tales hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. Yes, I know the nameless terrors of which they dare not speak. Yes, friends, it's time for the Signal Oil program, The Whistler. Rated by Independent Research, the most popular program on the West Coast. Remember, let every traffic signal remind you, with new signal gasoline, you do go farther than ever. Look for the familiar big yellow and black circle sign that identifies those popular signal service stations in seven western states from Canada to Mexico. And now, the Whistler's strange story, Lucky Night. Cities are noisy, sprawling things, tentacled with streets and avenues, scarred by towers and ditches, built of shacks and mansions. They combine the beautiful and the ugly. And the people of the cities are as diverse and varied as the buildings, rich and poor, educated and ignorant, the hurrying, scuffling, pushing mob that makes a city live. They are the principles in a million stories enacted every day in the city's streets and its buildings. Here, for example, is the beginning of one story. A man running down a street in the cheap section of the city just after nightfall. He darts across a narrow street without looking. He comes to the intersection of a street and alley just as a car turns the corner. <laughs> Hey, you hit him. How bad? He's dead. What are we going to do? Do? Get out of here. Drag him in that alley. Oh, yeah, but he's dead. That's hit and run driving. We already... You caught. heard me. Drag him in that alley and let's get out of here. Yes, the man lying dead in the alley marked the beginning of a story. A very important story to Mr. and Mrs. Craik... Albert and Carolyn, two lovely people who run a boarding house a few blocks away. It's a vital story to them because it involves money. And anything that involves money is more important than life itself to Mr. and Mrs. Crake. And another thing, Albert. you got to go up and see Mr. Sedgwick right this minute because he ain't paid his rent for next week. He's a new boarder, and it's best we show him right off that we ain't going to put up with back rent. Yeah, it'd be a lot better if we could get that Mr. Sedgwick out of here. I don't like the looks of him. Besides, he burns the electric too much at night. <sighs> it's getting so too honest people ain't able to run a decent, respectable place no more. Yeah. Well, anyhow, you go right up and see that, Mr. Sedgwick. And if he ain't got the money, out he goes. I don't like the way he looks at me, Caroline. Hmm? He has got a funny way of looking at people. But that ain't got nothing to do with the rent. And you tell him... Who's there? Your star boarder, Mr. Campion. Oh, dear. Now, what does he want? Good evening, Albert. Caroline. You ain't to call us by our first names. I told you that. A friendly gesture on my part, Mr. Craig. But I didn't descend into these charming quarters of yours to discuss the amenities of nomenclature. Now, you stop that fancy talk. And don't bring that cigarette in here. Hmm? Uh, you ain't been smoking in bed now, have you? No, but it's an idea. At least the feeble glow would provide more light than the ceiling fixture. Yeah, you're complaining again, and you're getting a good room and a reasonable rent. There ain't many boarding houses in the city where you no, get... No, you're the... right. There aren't many boarding houses in the city where the boarders have to race home at night to make sure they can get their evening paper. Or where the owners get up at four in the morning to steal the cream off the milk. Are you calling us thieves? No, I don't think so, Mrs. Craig. I'd have to qualify that. 
sneak thieves, I should say. Quit behind you... Oh, oh, no, stop it. Let's don't argue about it. What about the hot plate in my room? What's the matter with it? It belies its name, Mr. Craig. It is no longer a hot plate. It has become a refrigerator. You broke it. In the passage of time, sweet Caroline, mechanical and electrical appliances get out of order. But uh, we can't get parts, Mr. Campion. All right. Let's get to something else. The bedspread, for example. It has become one of the most exciting games I've ever played, to find a spot in the spread free from holes. It embarrasses me when I have guests. We can't afford a new one, Mr. Campion. <clears throat> we shall forget the bedspread and take up the subject of the ceiling fixture. That ain't broke. Well, not exactly, but it certainly is eccentric. It goes on and off, Mr. Craig, like a lighthouse. Though guaranteed to be untouched by human hands, yet it flashes ambitiously and energetically. Ah, you keep finding fault with everything. I am not alone. And now that I've registered my complaint, I shall retire to the damp chill of the crypt I occupy, and for which I pay 68 bucks a month. If you don't like it, you can get out. That, Mrs. Crake, is a line which becomes you well. Good night. Yeah, young puppy... For two cents, I... Such extravagance. And from you, of all people. Good night. Well, I never... Albert, as soon as we can, we'll put him out. Well, Carolyn, it might be hard to rent that room. And he does pay regular. Well... Oh, Mr. Sedgwick. Eh? You go right up there and get the money for Mr. Sedgwick. Now, Carolyn, maybe he'll bring it down. Night ain't over yet. You're scared of him. I don't like the way he looks at me. We'll both go. Huh. All right. There goes that Miss Barton turning on the water again to wash her hair. Miss Barton, you close off that water good and don't use too much. <laughs> yeah, she knows all right. Her being a day behind with her rent. Mr. Sedgwick? Mr. Sedgwick! Your lovely knuckles, Caroline. You'll skin them. You keep quiet. Wouldn't you uh, rather I told you that Mr. Sedgwick went out? How do you know? He went out the front door some time ago. Now go away and stop pounding. I have work to do. <laughs> I'd like to slap that smart alecky Mr. Campion's face for him. Uh, uh, never mind, Caroline. Uh, let's go for our walk. Yes, Mr. and Mrs. Craig, you are a remarkable couple. You do take the cream from the milk, and you do read the newspapers before the boarders get home to save a couple of pennies. And now you go for your walk. Not for exercise, though. It's to save electric light bills. Every night it's the same, down the same street, past the warehouse, over to the brewery, and along the street running through the wholesale district until you finally get sleepy and turn homeward. Albert, if that smart Mr. Campion tells you that he ain't using electric light in that lampy board, he's lying. Yeah, if we could just catch him at it. He's got enough light in his room. He don't need no more lamps. It's costing us money to put up with him. That's right, Albert. <sighs> money, money, we always got troubles. Uh, wait, wait a minute. That's a man laying there. Huh. Drunk, most likely. Yeah, that's right. Honest people have to slave for their money and... Some no good like this drinks it up and then... I don't smell no liquor. Well, maybe I'm going to look closer. Keep away from him, Albert. Maybe it's a trap. He might be a hold-up man. Carolyn, it's Mr. Sedgwick. It is. Look. What's the matter with him? He's, he's dead. Albert. Uh, looks like maybe he got hit by an auto. What's that? His pocket. It, it's stuffed with money. And him owing us rent. Hm. Look, Carolyn, it, it's... It's so much. Albert, what do you suppose... Shh, shh. Ain't nobody in sight. Uh, what are you thinking? Huh? Me? What are you thinking? Nothing, nothing. I ain't thinking nothing. Ain't nobody in sight. But uh, it'd be stealing. Ain't nobody in sight. Oh, Albert, it's so much money. Uh, looks... Uh, uh, probably he, he come by it bad. I never did like the way he looked. Like... Like one of them gangsters. Yeah, he wouldn't do no good with it. And he owes us rent. Yeah. 
It's his kind that's spend it on some chorus hey, girl. You and me, we... Albert, are you going to do it? Or ain't you? Uh, ain't nobody watching. Ain't nobody saw him before us either. And uh, there wouldn't be no money. Albert. There, then. Come on. Come on. I got it. With the prologue of tonight's story, Lucky Night, the Signal Oil Company brings you another strange story by The Whistler. If you're a Whistler fan, you've heard me say that with new signal gasoline, you now go farther than ever. But if you've gotten the impression that drivers interested in mileage are the chief buyers of signal gasoline, you'll be interested in a little experiment I conducted this week at a signal station asking customers why they preferred signal gasoline. An engineer in a 1942 Buick told me that new signal helped him get maximum efficiency from his motor. The driver of a 1937 Ford told me that with new signal in his tank, his tired old car actually felt young again. And a traveling salesman emphasized the importance of signal's good mileage. Now, if it seems strange to you that three drivers interested in three different qualities should all find them in the same gasoline, well, I can clear up that mystery for you in a hurry. You see, scientists, by rearranging the atoms in gasoline molecules, put amazing power into new signal gasoline. And because that power helps you get greater efficiency, extra performance from your motor, you naturally get maximum mileage. That's why, while you're enjoying its quicker starting, faster pickup, and higher anti-knock, you'll find you do go farther than ever with new signal gasoline. And now, back to the whistler. You've taken the money from Mr. Sedgwick, Albert and Carolyn. But look, isn't someone behind you? Faster, walk faster. Just a shadow, wasn't it? But you didn't know that, Mr. and Mrs. Crake. That money is heavy in your pocket, isn't it, Albert? Faster now, both of you. Hurry home to hide the money in the mattress. Yes, in the mattress with the rest of your miser's hoard. But faster again. The memory of Mr. Sedgwick lying back there is pursuing you, and you've got to get away. Faster now, faster. Carol and I... Lock the door. You didn't lose it, did you, Albert? No, no, I got it right here. You've got to put it in the mattress with the rest well, of Well, welcome home. Back early, aren't you? Mr. Campion. Yes, sir. Were you expecting someone else? No, I wasn't. Hey, what have you two been doing? Running? No. Why should we be running? You might have heard the nickel I dropped upstairs. Hey, you ain't funny, Mr. Campion. I wasn't trying to be funny, Albert. Now, look, what's the matter with you two? Uh, Mr. Mr. Crake ain't feeling good. Ah, he looks a little pale around the gills. Someone chasing you? No, no, nobody chased us. Why'd you ask that? Well, from the way you dashed in here, I thought perhaps you'd robbed a bank or something like that. Uh, we're honest people. Mm, to a certain extent, yes. Are you calling us thieves again? I explained that once before tonight. You two certainly do look excited. <laughs> and the only thing that could bring a flush to your careworn cheeks would be money. Perhaps left by a rich uncle? We ain't got any uncle. And that ain't no way to talk, Mr. Campion. Okay, we'll forget it. I'm going for a walk. Uh, uh, a walk? Hmm? Well, sure, why not? The ceiling fixture gave up the ghost altogether a few minutes ago. Can't work anymore. Uh, which way are you walking? Hmm? What? Does that make any difference? Well, of course not, but... Uh... It's, it's damp out. Yes. Uh, you might catch a chill. Huh. Oh. Your solicitude is absolutely amazing. Can this be the Crakes? The same people who all through the winter dole out heat by fractions of degrees? <laughs> you, uh, you want that light fixed, don't you? Unless I am to become a mole, light would be welcome, well, yes. Well, then you go along with Mr. Crake, Mr. Campion. Aha! What's the matter? I see. See what? Mr. Crake has... What have I got? Wire. Wire to repair the ceiling fixture. Oh. If I help him, it saves the electrician's fee for you. You're always poking fun at us. Oh, no, Mrs. Craig. Well, come along, Albert. You and I shall play Steinmetz to the ceiling fixture. Yeah, all right. Oh, but Mrs. Craig, 
Huh? I should still like to know what encounter brought you two home before sleep deadened your elfin steps and dulled those brilliant minds. Are you coming, Mr. Campion? Uh, certainly, Mr. Craig. Yeah, certainly. Halbert, you better leave that package with me. Oh, I... I forgot. Package? What package? In his coat pocket. Albert, give it to me. I ain't going to leave you alone with it. Uh, Mr. Campion. Uh, yes, Albert? Uh, there's wire and stuff in the cellar. You get it yourself here. Here. Uh, here's the key to the basement. What? Wonder of wonders. The key to the Craig cellar. And shall I find vintage 1902 or perhaps the skeletons of former boarders? You, uh, you fix the light, Mr. Campion. Uh, if there's anything you need, you can buy it tomorrow. We'll pay you for it. None. Absolutely numb, I am. This is the epitome of surprise. The key to the cellar, an offer of payment by the Craigs, all in one evening. You going to fix it or not? Certainly. Tomorrow may see the Craigs back in usual form. Therefore, tonight, I shall gather the golden fruits of whatever occasion this munificent... Uh, Charles, you're a fool. You mentioned package and there ain't none. I want to see how much is there. We could have counted it later. How do I know you wouldn't have took it some from yourself? Oh, you shut up and come on. We'll count it in our room. So you count the money, Mr. and Mrs. Craig. And how much is there? A hundred? Keep counting. Three hundred? Oh, much more. Five hundred, seven, a thousand. Keep counting. Perspiration is beading your foreheads. Your hands are damp, sticky. The bills stick to your fingers. Now you reach two thousand, three, thirty-five hundred. You're not through yet. Keep counting, counting. Your breath hot, your eyes glazed with greed. Ah, now you've finished counting. How much? Five. Five thousand (laughs) dollars. And we found it. Just found it. We went for a walk and we found it. It's allowed. You wake everybody. Oh, we're rich. We're rich. Who's Who's there? there? Campion. Is anything wrong? Uh, No, no. There's nothing the matter. But I thought I heard Mrs. Craig. Uh, Did you fix the light? Oh, yes. Here's the key to the cellar. Well, uh, put it under the door. Put it under the door. Shh. Uh, just uh, shove it under. Okay. But uh, are you sure there's nothing... Uh, that... no, just go to bed, Mr. Campion. I'm going out for a walk. If anyone calls, I'll be back in a half hour. Albert, he can't go. Maybe he'll go the way we did and see him. Uh, did you hear me? Uh, sure, sure. I, uh, uh, um, Mr. Campion. Yes? Uh, it's, uh, it's awful chilly out. Well, if you'll observe closely, I'm the possessor of an overcoat. A serviceable Benny, would uh, you? Uh, wouldn't you like a nice cup of, uh, of tea? I, I beg your pardon? Well, you like tea, don't you, Mr. Campion? I don't understand. And tomorrow we'll have a new hot plate for you. Yeah, yeah maybe we can pick up one secondhand. Mr. and Mrs. Craig, take a close look at me. My name is Campion... I've been living here for six months, during which time you must have seen that I am not affluent in any way. I have no influence with the governor. I know no politicians or statesmen. What little money I have, I spend for bare necessities. In short, Albert, Caroline, why are you spreading this soft soap with such a lavish hand? (laughs) We're willing to let bygones be bygones. Oh? Well, thanks very much for the offer of tea. But I shall take a walk just the same. He'll go the way we did. I know he will. Forget it. Close the door. (laughs) What if he does find him? All he'll see is that Sedgwick laying in the alley. We didn't kill him. Anybody could see it was Otto that done it. Campion can't know about the money. Sedgwick was only here two days. But we gotta hide it in case. Uh, In the mattress. With the rest. We ain't got time. What if Mr. Campion does know about the money? What if he sees Mr. Sedgwick and comes back here? We ain't got time to open the mattress and close it again. Well, then what do we do? Put it in the fireplace until tomorrow morning. Then what? When the bank's open, you go clear over to the outer side of town. If it's a nice day, you can walk. Uh, change one of the big bills into littler ones. Uh, you're crazy. What good's that going to do? You'll see. Now listen. 
Then go to another bank and put the littler bills in a bank account. We ain't got none. You can open one. Uh, maybe do the same thing for a week until all the money is out of here. Ain't nobody knows us on the other side of town. Yeah. Yeah, I see. <laughs> Well, that's a good idea. And then, uh, when we're good and sure nobody else knows about the money, we can take it out of the bank and bring it back here. See? Yeah. <laughs> well, that's smart. That's pretty smart, Carolyn. <laughs> I bet even Mr. Smarty Pants <laughs> Campion couldn't think of nothing like that. <laughs> That's a splendid idea, Albert and Carolyn. Splendid. You hear Mr. Campion come back. Go to his room upstairs. He doesn't knock on your door. He says nothing. So you sigh with relief. But you spend a sleepless night just the same. What if he does know and guesses? Then it's morning. You leave the house, Albert. In your pocket is a hundred dollar bill. You start for a bank across town, a bank where no one knows you. You reach the bank, give the bill to one of the tellers. He looks at you hard. Is there some suspicion in his glance? Is there, Albert? But he changes the bill, and you hurry out. You start for another bank blocks away. But before you get there, a newspaper headline catches your eye. You can't read it all, but two words make you start and turn pale. Bank robbery. You read as much as you can. But your lifelong miserliness doesn't let you spend a nickel, just five cents for that paper. Then one phrase strikes your eye. Marked money. Marked money. Now you hurry home. The other bank is forgotten. You should take a taxi. But you don't think of it, even though fives and tens are clutched in your pocket, the dampness from your hand making them a pulpy mass. Now you're home. Safe. Uh, pardon me, Mr. Craig. Uh, I... I can't stop now, Mr. Campion. Okay, so you can't stop. Don't you want to know why this policeman is here? Policeman? Where? Using the phone down the hall. It seems our good friend Mr. Sedgwick has some shady dealings. Sedgwick? Yes, you see, there was a little incident. Well, I, I got to go to Carolyn. I, I went out to get some medicine. I'll, uh... Oh, the law will wait, Mr. Craig. The law will wait. Carolyn! Carolyn! Is the policeman gone, Albert? No, he ain't. I saw him coming down the street while I was looking out the window for you. Why was you gone so long, Albert? Oh, never mind that. He what? came up the stairs and he rang the bell. Uh, I couldn't answer the door. I just couldn't, Albert. So I pretended I wasn't here. Uh, then Mr. Campion came down and knocked on our door. Did he hear you? He know you was here? Uh, I must have made some kind of noise because he talked to me. I didn't say nothing. Then I heard the policeman and Mr. Campion talking. You tell me what they were saying. I couldn't hear it good. I put my ear against the door, but I couldn't hear nothing but low talk. Uh, and that's what it's for. That's what it's for. Well, what are you saying? Where's the rest of the money? Still in the fireplace. Are they going to arrest us, Albert? Are they going to arrest us for taking money from Mr. Sedgwick? The paper said it was marked. Oh. The bandits took marked money from the bank. The serial numbers was all wrote down. Now we got it. That Mr. Sedgwick was a crook. We got to give it back. Yeah, you're crazy. Then we, we, we got to tell him we stole it off Sedgwick. We got to get rid of the money. Albert, what are you doing? Burning it. Oh, no, Albert. Let go of no. my arm. That, that fell at the bank. He looked funny at me. It took me 20 minutes to get back here. He told the police before I got back. You burned it! it! You shut up! I don't burn it! Oh, shut up! Oh! Albert, you didn't have to hit me. You didn't have to hit me. Shh, shh, shh. That's a policeman. Shh, shh, shh. Quiet, quiet. That's a policeman. Now you go keep him away. The money's nearly gone. Then, then he can come in. Go ahead now. Go ahead. Don't stand there like a fish. Go ahead. Who? Who is it? Campion, with a stout minion of the law, name of... Is his name is McCarthy. Just a couple of seconds more. Just a couple of seconds. I, uh, I ain't dressed. Oh, come, come, Mrs. Craig. It's after ten. You were up early this morning. I heard you. It's done, Carolyn. You can let him in. The Whistler will return in just a moment with the strange ending of tonight's story. Meantime, I'm going to let you in on a little secret. Don't you be surprised if someday somebody stops you on the street and asks such questions as, what do you consider the most important qualities in gasoline? Or, why did you select the brand of motor oil you're using? The questioner will probably be from the research organization which Signal Oil Company regularly employs. 
to find out how they can serve you better, how they can help you get more pleasure from your car. It's this policy of finding out what the motorist wants, then giving it to him, that has led to the development of ever finer signal products, including that amazing new signal gasoline that's so packed with power you can actually feel the difference and see it and hear it. Give it a try. The chances are you'll say signal gasoline has everything. For after all, new signal gasoline, like all signal products, is the answer to what you, the motoring public, have told signals research people that you want. And now, back to the whistler. Well, Albert and Carolyn, it was just too good to be true, wasn't it? You thought it was your lucky night that your good friend Mr. Sedgwick, lying dead in the alley, would turn out to be a profitable investment after all. But there were too many things you didn't know, too many strings attached to that $5,000. That's why you're relieved now as you watch the last of it smolder in the grate after admitting Officer McCarthy and Mr. Campion. Uh, what's that, Officer? What about Mr. Sedgwick? Well, when we found his body lying there in the alley, we had to find out where he was staying. That's why I'm here. You say he's been living here? Only for two days. Uh, we didn't know nothing about him. I'm sure, or no honest folks would. Him with a record a yard long and more aliases than you can shake a stick at. Uh, as soon as I read about the bank robbery, I said to Carolyn, that Sedgwick is the kind of a man who looks like a robber. Sedgwick? Robber? Is that right, McCarthy? Oh, no. Small stuff with Sedgwick's line. Sneak thieving. The bank robbery's been cleared up and all the money's recovered. No, that's not right. It's in all the morning papers. The Crakes never buy newspapers, McCarthy. Papers cost a nickel. But I read, I saw... Uh, uh, did you read the paper? Well, I couldn't read it all, only what I could see. A uh, typical Crake action. Peek over and read as much as possible on the newsstand or over a shoulder. But Sedgwick, he, he had $5,000. He... 5000 How do you know? He had it. We know. Not a penny on him when we found him. Oh, oh. That night you came in, excited, out of breath. Oh, no, I can't believe... Oh, no, this is too much. McCarthy! Sedgwick was a sneak thief. He was. Albert. Uh. Caroline. Uh -huh. Did you keep money in your room here? Did you? Oh, the mattress! It's been split open! You! You burned out all the money, you fool! You burned out all the money! Ah! Huh? What's she talking about? Briefly, McCarthy, poetic justice. Next Monday at 9 o'clock, The Whistler will bring you another strange tale. The Whistler is broadcast for your entertainment by the marketers of Signal Gasoline and Motor Oil and fine quality automotive accessories, and by your neighborhood Signal dealer. This program produced by George W. Allen with tonight's story by Russell Hughes, music by Wilbur Hatch, is transmitted to our troops overseas by the Armed Forces Radio Service. is your signal for the signal oil program, The Whistler. This is Marvin Miller speaking, reminding you to look for those familiar yellow and black circle signs that identify those popular signal oil stations in seven western states from Canada to Mexico. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>